Hey, welcome to my channel. I'm Dr. Sharice. I help black men and women heal from trauma and toxic relationships. And today I wanted to talk about some reasons why your life sucks, why you don't like your life. And I'm going to give you some techniques on what you can do to improve your life. This is by no means an exhaustive list. I think it's just some of the common ones that I've seen with the people that I've worked with. The first reason I have that you don't like your life is you don't think it can get any better. So that feeling of stuckness or like there's nothing else you can do, there's no way your life can improve. When you look to the future, you're not excited or looking forward to it because you just think it's going to be more of the same, right? That, that kind of thinking is part of the scarcity mindset thinking and it keeps you where you are. Your goal here is to be forward thinking, to start imagining what can my life be like in the future that I would be looking forward to, that I would be enjoying. And I think, right, I talk about this all the time, I think the best strategy for this is to have a gratitude practice. Part of the gratitude practice is looking at your life right now, embodying the energy of gratitude and being grateful for what is happening in your life right now because it's not it's not all bad like for it to be all bad it would have to be something like you're a prisoner and if you were you wouldn't be watching this video right that that requires a whole other set i'm talking about the average person who's living the life going to work you know maybe um has friends that's a whole other video uh but you're living a life and you have some agency there are things that you can do right now to improve your life so the gratitude practice what you're going to do is every night or every morning or throughout the day, but I think a every night practice is a good place to start, is to write down three or five things that you're grateful for. The number that you write down, it doesn't really make a difference. The goal here is to be consistent. Doing this for 21 days, 30 days is going to shift your mindset. If you've never done a gratitude practice before, like get ready for positivity, light, for people to say you're glowing because you're going to be so appreciative of where you are that you're going to give yourself permission, right? Your mind is then going to be shifting, giving yourself permission to think about the future in a positive way. The number two reason I have is that you are comfortable with your current level of discomfort and misery. It's sort of a tolerable level of unhappiness. Uh, you know what it is, right? And this can be in many different phases, um, many different areas of your life, right? So if you're living at home and it's a toxic situation with your family, you're familiar with it. And the idea of venturing out on your own is so scary. You're like, I know what this is and I don't really like it, but I don't even know where to start to change it. Or you're in, you know, one of those toxic or abusive relationships and you maybe you don't even know that it's toxic you're unhappy or you're arguing all the time and you just think this is just how it is right this is just how it is um another one could be your job you don't like your job right but the thought of looking for a new job and not being in this secure place because it's predictable because you've been there so long is so scary like change is so scary change is difficult but in order to get where you want to go in life, that's exactly what you'll have to do. So my strategy for this, right? You'll you want to shift from I'm comfortable with this level of discomfort to getting to the point where you're sick and tired of being sick and tired. That's when people make, make a change. Like They're like, I can't be here anymore. I can't do this anymore. You're not there yet, right? You're not there. So what I want you to do to get there is to write a letter to God. In this letter to God, I want you to ponder the question, what does surrender look like? What would it look like for me to surrender my fears and my worries to God? And then to ask for help, ask for direction. So you're going to pour out all of your fears you, and you have to write it, right? You need a pen and a paper to write this. Don't do it in your phone. Don't just say it out loud. There is research that supports writing things down, right? Writing down your goals, all those things. Research supports the power of writing things out. It's like, you can't take it back, right? Uh, so I want you to write this letter to God. You can keep this letter if you want. You can burn this letter if you want. But the point is that you're going to write out all your fears. Your goal here is to surrender to God, to ask for the courage to move forward. <laughs> to ask for the courage to move forward. I feel like it's talking to me. So that you can really give yourself permission to dream, to even have the new ideas and the new possibilities of how your life can improve. My number three is you are afraid of change and the unknown. So similar to what I shared before, 
the fear of doing things differently, uh, the fear of not knowing what's going to happen in the future, not being able to predict. If you break up with your boyfriend, uh, will you be able to find someone who loves you? If you, you know, quit your job, will you be able to find another one? Will it be worse than what it is that you had already? All of those thoughts, all of those worries, uh, after you've written this letter to God, the next thing that I want you to do is to script, right? Scripting is a manifestation technique, but I think it can also help to reduce some of those worries and get you to the dreaming part. So in scripting, what you're going to do is you're going to take a day at some point in the future. I think two years or five years is a good time frame. A year, a year might be too soon, but you can do a year, whatever day you pick. You're going to write out your ideal day from start to finish, but you're going to write it in present tense, right? Today, I went to, right? You're, you're making it sound like it's a thing you did today, but it's a, it's a future endeavor. Today, I went to the mall or, you know, grocery shopping, like whatever it is that you want your day to look like from start to finish, you are going to include it. And you're going to talk about how you feel. Because, I mean, Abraham Hicks, I really enjoy. Uh, she's, you know, really big on law of attraction, manifestation. And the feeling, embodying the feeling is the goal of this exercise. You want to talk about that feeling so that you can introduce it into your mind frame because you're shifting from, right, surviving to thriving, an abundance mindset. So giving yourself that permission to like, what would a day look like? Challenging yourself to really brainstorm. What do I want to do? What would I be doing? Who would I be doing it with? Where would I be? All of those things I want you to write down in your ideal day. And my number four for why you don't like your life or that your life sucks is that you are letting someone else's opinion control you, run your life. Even if the people you look up to, the people who took care of you, their ideas of, you know, what a grand life looks like is similar to yours, doing it, right? Doing your life based on the approval of another person is exhausting and it will only lead you to misery. Your happiness is on the other side of this person's disappointment of you. And you have to make space for that disappointment. So the, the exercise, right? And you are probably going to need an accountability partner for this or a therapist or a life coach. I do do spiritual life coaching. These are some of the tips I use when I'm working with folks. Uh, I probably only have like one slot left. If you think it's just me and you, like we will be vibing, <laughs> you can look in the description box for the link to schedule a session with me. Uh, but what you're going to need to do is tell people no. Like you're really going to have to practice these boundaries. And so I give I give some of my clients like a time frame to speak up for everything. Like either you need to, every time a thing happens, you need to speak up about it or you need a period of time where you're only focusing on yourself. So if this person, let's say your mom, is always asking you to do something around the house or um, pay a bill or whatever it is, but it, let's say it's not an appropriate boundary. You, in your life, you can think, What's appropriate? What's not appropriate? What kind of pressures are people putting on me that are unrealistic, right? Because parents shouldn't be asking kids for money. You should be contributing to your household if you live in that home. But if it's one of those situations where there's a family member who's always asking and taking, 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 or you have a friend or in your relationship, the boundaries are unclear or unbalanced. You need to practice saying no. You need to speak up for yourself and make it like a little game. Like this is a thing you're doing for three months. I think three months is really a challenging time. At least you need to do it at least for a month where you are recalibrating what boundaries mean to you and what it means to stand up for yourself and do what you want to do, not based on what someone else is asking you to do. Let me know if you have any questions. You can leave a comment or an emoji to show your support, you know, YouTube is treating me pretty well. I am loving the growth of my channel and I'm asking for your support to share this video, give it a like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching.